Hello everybody, my name is Andrew Casey from Hypersanity Books. Now, in today's video I'll be doing a book review of The Neverending Story, written by Michael End, a German author. This particular book is fascinating, however, more to it. At laying the book, it's 26 chapters. The book, you can really split it into two parts because of the way the book is written and with the movie adaptations. I will be doing a little bit of comparing. I'll try not to do spoilers. I'll be touching on a few chapters within the review. Otherwise, we'll get right into it. Chapter 1. The protagonist is introduced as Bastian Balthazar Bucks. The story is very different to the film. It starts off with Bastian being used to comfort eating, more so because of the death of his mother. His father is in a deep depression in the book. The story sort of starts off running away from bullies, taking the book from the bookstore, the never-ending story, trying to get out of a particular test at school to reading the book, as we've seen in the film. Now, getting into the fantasy side of the story, there's a bit of a change. Rock biters are called rock chewers. The willow wisp is introduced within the group with the racing snail, the small guy, and the nighthawk. Now, the book also has a few other differences when they're talking about the nothing, so it's introducing the antagonistic force. The characters in Fantasia are seeking help from the childlike empress. So the quest is to go to the ivory tower for help. Within the book, there are a lot of vast differences to the film. I won't be able to touch on all of them and some things can be definitely overlooked. However, starting off with the story, it was quite intriguing, uh, especially when you're growing up with the movie, The Neverending Story. So the first half is based off, the movie is based off the first half of the book. So getting more into it, in the Ivory Tower, they hear about the Empress being sick and a quest for a Atreyu to find a cure for the childlike Empress. So that's where the story is beginning through. There are a lot of italics in the first half of the book because it focuses on Bastion reading the never-ending story while he's in the attic at school. So it can have a few parts that are hard to read when it's lengthy uh, paragraphs in italics. However, it's a small gripe and overlook anyway, because the story is quite intriguing and it's a good way of splitting up the story the way this book was written. I can't say this word properly. I'll just read the, the end of a chap, the chapter. And finally, three days after that, Pyro Krenzak Ruck, the rock chewer, appeared. He came potting along on foot, for in a sudden frenzy of hunger he had eaten his stone bicycle. So that was another interesting point I quite enjoyed with the book, that the rock biter ate his bike. So that was a little bit more to finishing, and then it gets into the next chapter, Atreyu's mission. The story's moving along, so Bastion's reading the never-ending story, he's the protagonist, however he's seeing the protagonist as Atreyu in the never-ending story. So following Atreyu's story, there's a point of seeing Morla, the ancient one, so uh, within that part it leads into the Swamps of Sadness, as we know from the film. It was very different because the horse is talking and saying he wants to die within the Swamps of Sadness. So a very different take. The movie scene was quite a big part of film history. Within the book, it was very different to hearing a talk, horse talk, of course. So moving along, it gets into... There's a lot of differences to a bit of a fight that happens before and after. Leads into finding the Luck Dragon, which Falcor looks more like an actual dragon. Within getting to the meeting up with 
Eggy Wook. There's, there's the talk about the three gates. In the movie, there's two gates, the Sphinx's Gate and the Magic Mirror Gate. With this one, it is three gates, where the first gate is the Riddle Gate, Magic Mirror Gate, and the No Key Gate, leading towards the Southern Oracle, which is a variety of towers. The author did not like the movie because of the Sphinxes. In the book, there's a little bit of an illustration of two male sphinxes and the male sphinxes keep their eyes closed to allow him to pass through as opposed to the film the author didn't like the statues because they had f female anatomy and felt that they were cheap like hookers so he referred to the movie as revolting mostly because of that which is his own right so the adaptation can be vastly different where in the book it was a, a very different perspective to see from the author's create creativity so moving along there's three gates so um it comes into the magic mirror gate where bastion is reading the book and seeing atreyu and atreyu is seeing bastion in the mirror so that was quite an interesting take again as well before walking into the mirror. Atreyu is knocked off the Luck Dragon Felcor by four air elementals. It doesn't have the interaction of him meeting Rockbiter and Rockbiter giving up. That was a dramatic scene that was added in by film. However, in the book, he, instead of seeing pictures of the adventure so far, He's faced off with Gamork in a place known as Spook City, Spook, yep, Spook City, where they face off. Gaia, a dark princess, has an enchanted chain put on, keeping Gamork there, to what is explained. They do have their conflict. Atreyu wins. Uh, nothing is tearing up Fantasia more, so there's the rush to the Ivory Tower different within the climax leading up within the first half of the book in this part it is showing bastion more being worried about his appearance his physical appearance to his overeating as opposed to his father's words in the movie he is more worried about how atreyu would see him or how the empress would see him that is where coming to save them is not going to happen by giving the empress the new name to what the Southern Oracle was previously saying, or Eurola. Now, this introduced another character that is Old Man of Wandering Mountain. This character was in The Neverending Story 3, the film. However, in the book, he was introduced at this point where the Empress is, childlike Empress is seeing that Bastion can't get it together so she's seeking counsel from him so as he's going back to the beginning of the book and relaying things back to Bastion to prove something to him there's also the red text that's going into the book as the events are currently happening I found that to be quite fascinating I quite like this character I really prefer to forget the never-ending story through the film I didn't see how it was necessary it just was a completely awful movie however within the book i quite like how this character came into the story and how he was quite bold and strong this led into a very different climax without trying to spoil it i do apologize however the introduction of a particularly awesome character i have to say i quite liked so that leads into the end of the first half of the book moving into the second half Focusing on the front cover for a moment, Bastion is sitting on a lion, not the Luck Dragon. There's a misinterpretation there. This particular character, Grogman, I can't say a lot of names right, so please don't kill me. It's fantasy fiction, it gets a bit tricky. With this type of character, it was a, a magical lion. Wherever it goes, a desert goes with it. 
It is known as the Many Coloured Death. It changes colour. By night, it turns to stone and dies. By morning, it rises or recreates itself every day, kind of to the theory with the Phoenix. So within this type of character, it was introduced at the beginning of the second half. Bastion has unlimited wishes due to the Oren that's given to him. Now, in the regards to the story, saving Fantasia, he all the wishes he makes helps restore Fantasia and recreate it more in his image as a way of restoring what was already previously lost. Now, this is... Comparing to the second movie, it is vastly different. There are a few similarities, but there are a lot of differences to it that make the book that much better than the film. The film was atrocious, but the book, I have to say, is extremely intriguing. So moving along, there's a few scenes that eventually lead to Bastion meeting up with Atreyu. Bastion is the protagonist, Atreyu is the deutonagonist in the story at this particular time. They meet up with a trio, and one particular guy is very, very egotistical, trying to impress someone who will only have the hand in marriage to someone if they're the perfect man. And I mean, the standards are ridiculously high. So Bashan uses his wishes inappropriately to having an archery contest with him, to shooting an arrow it wedged between his arrow. Then the next was throwing a deck of cards where the other guy was able to pierce the center of the Queen uh, Ace of Hearts while Bastion was able to hit every card in order. So something that seems impossible he's able to do due to misuse of the wishes. Now it moves the story along a little bit where he ends up talking a bit more smack about a particular dragon that no one's heard of because it's made up. So the wishes then create the dragon out of nothing and to the dragon's location, a weapon of choice to killing the dragon, etc. So there is a particular part I do like with this, how it introduces these other three characters where one is a protagonist in his own right and it worked really well how this worked into the story and they're not in the movie. I will read a part of the book right now. As for hero Hironrek, he actually succeeded in reaching Morgul, the land of the cold fire. He ventured into the petrified forest of Woodgar Bay, crossed the three moats of Rhaegar Castle found the lead axe and slew the dragon, Smog. Then he brought Olmar back to her father. At that point, she would gladly have married him. But by then, he didn't want her anymore. That, however, is another story and shall be told another time. So, moving the story along, Zyada is introduced. She has her castle, that's a giant hand. So within the movie, there are a lot of similarities to book. However, this kind of thing worked a bit differently. She gets in his ear the more he's losing his memories of his human life. So one theory that Atreyu had is it's happening because he's human, not a Fantasian. So granting so many wishes is making him forget his life on Earth. So, cutting the long story short, Bastion goes from protagonist to antagonist, or so he thinks. So, one part of the book, great clouds of dust showed him that Atreyu's army was no joke. Don't worry, said Zyada. Who had stepped up to Bastion? My armor giants haven't begun to fight yet. They'll defend your ivory tower. No one can stand up to them except for you and your sword. A few hours later, the first battle reports came in. Atreya had enlisted almost all of the Greenskins, at least 200 Centaurs, 850 Rock Chewers, five Luck Dragons led by Falcor who kept attacking from the air. 
a squadron of giant eagles who had flown from the mountains of destiny and innumerable other creatures even a sprinkle of unicorns so it became very different how this book was actually written way ahead of its time and the movie adaptation did not live up to it it was so much better the book than the movie so cutting the story short the childlike empress wasn't seen reports came through and it was more encouraged for bastion to take over the ivory tower and sit on the throne so syed is in his ear about being the childlike emperor that no one has ever seen and putting on a coronation for him it is an extremely different take to what the movie did it is so much better if you're expecting a really really big epic fight it doesn't quite go that way although it comes to bastion and atreyu fighting and with his particular magic sword the sword uh, comes out of the sheath breaks atreyu's sword and stabs him he falls off the ivory tower and falcor snatches him up that way so i won't spoil which way the story goes from here that will wrap up for today otherwise this particular book compared to film the film i rate for the first movie five stars the second movie i rate it three stars the third movie that is unnecessary i rate it two which is trying to be nice i guess as far as the book goes as a whole five stars for or five little logos for the never-ending story absolutely a must-read book very vastly vastly different from the movie with a lot of lot of similarities but it it was written way ahead of its time a wonderful read so that all being said there is a lot more i would love to touch on otherwise that's just going to ruin it so definitely give this book a try i do prefer reading more self-published books i'll be doing more videos on reading books i won't be touching on as many topics in reviewing books because of spoilers this book however was an exception due to movie adaptation and i couldn't have done the book justice to not talk about it as much so um yeah five five points Otherwise, that's it for today, and I'll do another one soon.